Hi, welcome to Jackie Burns Creations. This is another retro vintage Halloween hosted by Monica of Up All Night and Indiana Jones. And let's get started. Project number one. So I had this gourd, and I decided that I was going to make a ghost out of it, a retro ghost. So I was using this Jovi air-dry clay, and I tried to make it uh, even over the, over the gourd. And I was smoothing it out, and I was using uh, saran wrap to help me smooth it out. Covered the whole thing. And I was really working it in and getting it really tight on there and everything. And I let it dry overnight. Well, first I first I put the face on it. Making cheeks and I cut them in half with my little modeling tools. Smoothing out the bumps where the cheeks are. Flattening them out a little bit. So we don't need them looking like a great big pimple on the face, do we? Got this little rubber tool on the end of here. This is a cool um, kit, and I can't remember where I got it from, but it's got the handle, and it's got little tools on the end of it, little knife, and and stuff and so I'm just trying to use the plastic and smooth it out really nice and not leave my fingerprints in it okay and I got them on there even a little more clay to make the mouth just rolling it out like you do, like a snake type long piece. And I think we're all sculptor at heart because I'm sure we all played with clay and play dough when we were young. Okay, gonna put that in place. That's the ghost saying, ooh. Ooh, did I sound scary? I hope so. Ooh, scary spooky. I think the retro was so fun. Because it wasn't gory, it was just fun. And a little bitty nose. Just working that on there, working it in. And I had a thought about, huh, how can I do the eyes the way I want to? Just giving it a little smooth out while I'm thinking about how I'm doing the eyes.
See me tap on my finger there? <laughs> I tap my fingers when I think. Okay, so I took a paint bottle and just pushed it in. And then I put the highlight or raised the edges around there. Just kind of give it a last little pat. Well, I let it sit for a couple of days to dry. And look at it. Can you see how cracked it is? I was so bummed. I thought, oh. It's just so cracked. It wasn't falling apart or anything, and it was really sturdy, but it was just so cracked. So I took some Waverly chalk paint in the white and add just a little bit of water, just a little spray, a little more paint. So the paint was really quite thick. Yeah, it gets very thick if it sits for a while. And I knew I knew I needed a good amount. Now, this is what I always talk about, the salt wash. And it's just a powder, and it comes with a little measuring cup. And I just put one scoop in there and you mix it around and round. And I tell you, this stuff is, does, it looks like concrete, but it acts like concrete. It is so tough and dries so tough when uh, it gets all done. So I put a little bit more just acrylic paint in there. And it thickens up really a lot. So see, look at that. It's just, I will not, after I use up this clay that I've got, I will not buy this stuff again. In fact, I just ordered the foam clay that uh, Indiana Jones uses. Now I'm just slathering it on there. That's my technical term, slather. I think that's a very crafter artist term, slather. I'm trying to get in all the little crevices. And it'll come out a little more rough textured than I originally wanted up. But with all those cracks, I had to do something to f cover them up. And this did a great job. This went right in the holes. And I had enough left over to paint a pumpkin that I already used on my Hocus, Hocus Pocus video the other day. It's funny the order that we do things in because I actually made this long before I did my last two videos. Okay, so I've got a black marker and I'm going around outlining the eyes. Giving it a nice half oval for the pupil. I was trying to get in all the cracks because there was a few more 
crevices to uh, work with, it being more rough texture. But can you see how it really covered up all those cracks? To the nose. And a lot of times I give away my projects or sell my projects, but this is one I think I'll keep. He's so cute. And I'm just bringing it up on the edge. I didn't want to cover the whole outside circle. I just want to come up on the edge and uh, fill in the mouth. What I'm doing is I'm switching the nib. Give it a more straight lined. And I can go around and get in all the edges. your favorite costume when you were a kid and you did Halloween was it a store-bought one or was it one that you helped put together or that you put together when my mom didn't know what to dress us at and we didn't want a store-bought costume she would dress us up as gypsies and put makeup on us and let us wear lots of her jewelry and a flowy skirt, and we thought that was just fun. Also, one time when I got, I think it was in sixth grade, getting a little bit older, I took a box and I covered it with white butcher paper and cut out dots and made myself as a dice. I found this pretty pink in my markers, so I thought I'd use that. Giving him a couple of worry lines there, a little bit of a chin and eyebrows. Using a white marker. I like using the paint markers. I can be more accurate. Filling in a few areas that maybe I went out of bounds and then making highlights on the eyes. I had this, uh, bought this in a package with some other spider rings, and I decided to glue it on the top of his head. And I made this little stand for him to go on with some pretty paper and uh, zigzagged it back and forth. It's kind of thick, and so almost looks like a little collar on him wasn't sitting quite right, but I fixed him. Okay, project number two. Actually, it's two and three, but we'll do them together. So I had these uh, boards that I found at Target. I think they were $3 or $5 a board. I can't remember, but we're using the jack-o'-lantern.
and nice thick plaques and then they've got a faux leather on top. I don't know if they were supposed to be pumpkins or what, but they they make good for Halloween decoration. Now I'm using a little bit darker orange around the edge. And they, the jack-o'-lantern color was still wet, so it was easy to blend in. If you don't have a floating medium, then it's, it's okay to use if it's still wet, and they just blend it in. Okay, just giving it a good dry. Oh my gosh, did I not show it? I took some of the Waverly wax, the dark wax, and I just lightly on the tip of the brush touched the edges and then smoothed it out with my fingers to make it even a little bit darker. And I have these cards, these Halloween cards that are so retro. And I picked the ghost one because I thought it'd go cute with my ghost. Unfortunately, the heat gun wasn't hot enough, so it didn't stick. hate that when that happens because I'm impatient. So I pulled out some of my wood glue. And I just painted the back of it. The tip got clogged up, so it's easier just to pull out a paintbrush and use it that way. Trying to smooth it out a little bit, and it felt a little bumpy, so I fired up my heat gun, hoping I could melt the glue on the back so it would stick better. So I'm sticking some heavy bottles of paint on top of it to make it lay down flat. And then I'm doing number two. I hope everybody's having a great time decorating for Halloween. I miss not being able to decorate for fall on Halloween this year, but next year I will. Okay, I'm putting something heavy on this one. Letting them dry for a while. And here they are all finished. The final reveal. Don't you think they came out cute? I just trimmed the sides with an X-Acto blade. And I like my little ghosty. I think it all came out looking very retro. And I thank you for visiting and come again. Bye.